A field hospital during the Civil War would not have been a place that you would have wanted to be. We are about two miles or so behind what would have been the Confederate lines along Seminary Ridge during the second and third day of the Battle of Gettysburg on July 2nd and 3rd. This area that we're now situated in uh, would have been just adjacent to Francis Bream's property. Uh, Bream owned what was known as the Black Horse Tavern, which is just behind uh, my right shoulder here at the base of this hill. This property itself would have encompassed one of the more larger hospitals on this part of the battlefield. Uh, Lafayette McClaws' division and James Longstreet's Confederate Corps uh, would have established their main hospital back here. You would have had field hospitals closer to the front lines where men would have first been taken to receive initial care, but then they eventually would have been taken here to the main brigade or divisional hospitals. So here uh, on Mr. Bream's property, McClaws's Divisional Hospital will be established on July 2nd, and it will actually remain in operation for about six weeks, even following the battle as the Confederate Army does retreat here, and the men who are not being able to be carried away uh, to larger Confederate hospitals further south. The Union Army comes through here and will make these men prisoners, but also help uh, in their treatment and recovery as well. This would have been a safe area for the Confederates uh, during the battle. As I said, we're about two miles or so behind the actual Confederate lines. Um, Union artillery shells really aren't, aren't going to be able to reach this far unless they are overshot by a lot. The hospital itself really wouldn't have been under threat. So this entire rear section of Seminary Ridge here in the Confederate line, this is all major divisional hospitals here, stretching uh, way beyond my uh, back rear here, across what's known as the Fairfield Road, and even further, probably a mile, a mile and a quarter south of here. Yeah, the men who are treated here, uh, in particular, see heavy action on July 2nd. That's really the only day that they're going to be heavily engaged because they suffer so many casualties. Um, on the second day of the battle. Uh, McClaws' division, being part of James Longstreet's corps, are going to be tasked with attacking the left end of the Union line on July 2nd in the areas that we know today as Devil's Den, the Wheat Field, and the Peach Orchard. McClaws' men uh, will succeed in punching through uh, General Daniel Sickles' third corps line out in that area, but Sickles being so far ahead of the rest of the Union Army where he positions his troop, he's really going to take out the momentum of this Confederate attack. Their, their main objective was Cemetery Ridge, Cemetery Hill, but by the time they finally get to that section of the Union line, uh, they're, they've exhausted most of their ammunition, uh, they're losing daylight as it's now after 7 o'clock, and they've lost a great many men. So with Union reinforcements rushed uh, to repulse them, they are going to be thrown back. They will essentially lose most of uh, the gains they made that day. A lot of the wounded, like you would have had being treated here, might have been left on the field for hours, or in some cases even days, because the men can't actually get to them. So it's tremendous suffering, where some men who might have been saved through a surgery, like here at Black Horse Tavern, uh, they end up dying because they don't receive that, that medical treatment uh, quick enough. The muskets are firing at such a low muzzle velocity that when these balls hit limbs that since it's just one ounce of lead usually it mushrooms out and lodges into the actual body rather than passing through uh, and it could also splinter the bone so which is why we it leads to amputation being the go-to surgery to be performed because usually the limbs just couldn't be saved and the balls couldn't be removed from the actual body. I do have an account I believe of one uh, confederate surgeon um, who did actually mention how many on July 2nd, at least this point when he was here, probably during the late afternoon, uh, how many men would have been treated here. And his name is Dr. Simon Baruch. He's a surgeon in Joseph Kershaw's brigade of South Carolinians in McClaws' division. And he says, all day and all night, the work continued at the field hospital. And throughout the following day, also the wounded came pouring in, many on foot, among them several captured Union soldiers, on two of whom I operated. At sundown, I threw myself on the hay and slept until aroused by an orderly who brought a command from General Lee for Drs. Pierce, Knott, and myself to remain at the Black Horse Tavern Field Hospital until further orders. The morning found us, being July 3rd now. The slightly wounded had been removed, most of them being able to march. The field hospital contained now 222 seriously wounded men, 10 orderlies, and three surgeons. And it's known that 
Um, after the battle, obviously these hospitals, Confederate soldiers, when they die here, they would be buried on the field. Same with Union soldiers uh, in their uh, specific hospitals. But uh, in the 1870s, when the Confederate remains around the battlefield and on the battlefield are actually disinterred to be brought to more permanent resting place there at the South, uh, it's numbered that there was about 70 Confederate dead who were found on uh, Mr. Bream's property behind us. But there also were Union soldiers who were treated at Confederate camps, men who would have been captured along the front lines and brought back here to receive treatment for their wounds. Um, their, you know, both sides did take care of their wounded when they could. Obviously, a hospital like this, Confederate wounded, would have gotten them you know, priority treatment, uh, but that's not to say that Union soldiers weren't taken care of with the same kind of compassion. During the war, uh, with men being treated for their wounds, uh, it's estimated about one out of every six Confederate who is wounded will end up dying from his wounds. It's obviously caused by infection brought on after surgeries, and about one out of every seven Union soldier. Uh, not to mention, too, men are in hospitals not just with wounds, but suffering from disease, too. Uh, it's well known that dysentery is the number one killer during the Civil War. Um, and about two men will die of disease for every one man that is actually killed in action on the battlefield. The men who are wounded here, they might survive their wounds now, but yet the complications from those wounds linger for months, years, even sometimes decades before men can actually succumb to wounds that they might have received here at the Battle of Gettysburg and later in life. And if anyone is interested in, in coming out here to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania to see where this crucial event in American history did take place, uh, feel free to, to come by and get a tour with a licensed battlefield guide. Doesn't matter which one you do it with. Uh, all are very knowledgeable. But these tours, they're, they're veered towards you. So it's, it's all meant for your personal experience. And you can ask as many questions as you want. The guides, you follow them around in your vehicle. Uh, and if there was anything you wanted to see in particular, discuss in particular, it's your tour. So this is the best personal ex way of experiencing the battlefield for people who are coming here for the first time or even Gettysburg nuts who want to dive as deep as possible, turn over every rock that they possibly can. Touring did resume uh, late in the summer here uh, with a lot of restrictions, which is why normally guides would be getting in the vehicle with you. Uh, but now we have to do caravan tours where you follow the guide uh, to each stop along the way. But uh, all through the winter still, we give tours all year round. So I'll be doing tours through December, January, February when it is 20 degrees outside and freezing. Um, but other than that, restrictions aren't too bad. Hey, wear a mask, be safe, social distance. We'll still be able to give you a great experience.